my dear friends, Svetlana Shlapak, the founder of UKVisaSuccess.com is here. Uh, if you are an international or a family member of an international, you are probably quite uh, naturally concerned about your present and future rights to remain in the UK. I have been practicing UK immigration law for over a decade now and discovered that a lot of internationals and their family members have only a very vague idea about uh, their immigration rights in the UK. And to rectify this, I decided to create uh, this special frequently asked show where where I'll be answering various questions and clarifying different aspects of EU law. If you find these videos useful, please do like them, subscribe to my channel and share them with those who may benefit from them. And here is your next question. Section 9B of the Permanent Residence EEAPR form. In my previous four videos, I've explained what the term accession member states meant. I have created an overview video of all accession member states and then concentrated on three waves for the accession member states and explained the rules about them living and working in the UK during the transitional period of time. It is very important to make sure that you comply with these rules which were imposed during the transitional period of time because if you don't, then any period of time which you spent without fully complying with the rules will be completely disregarded for the purposes of making your permanent residence application, which is uh, in some cases a big thing. It will make a difference between acceptance and refusals of the application. Today, I decided to publish one of the sections of the EAPR form. And it is not a random section. It is a section 9B, which is all about accession member states. And if you find my video guidance for this section useful, you can always get the full uh, guide giving you an overview of all 19 sections of this uh, 85 page EAPR form. And at the end of uh, today's video, I'll explain how you can get this free guide. So have fun with section 9B and see you soon. Section 9, Part uh, B, uh, pages 50 to 53, uh, relevant EU nationals activity in the UK. As I mentioned before, Part B is only relevant and should be completed uh, by the accession state uh, workers uh, and their family members. If you and or your sponsor are not from these countries, then uh, Part B is not for you, so you may uh, skip uh, this part. As with all complicated sections of the form, I would like to start by explaining why the section is here. In all six categories, the applicants, in order to get their permanent right to reside in the UK, need to show that they were here for a relevant period of time. And as we already seen, this period varies depending on the category. And that the relevant EU national was exercising treaty rights. In other words, he or she was a self-sufficient student or working or self-employed or self-sufficient. However, in addition to these requirements, uh, the Home Office wants uh, to ensure that uh, either you or the your EU national sponsor uh, was uh, involved in these acti activities legally. This means uh, that uh, you or the relevant EU national sponsor had the permission uh, to work uh, in the UK during the relevant period of time and that they had the necessary documentation to confirm this. And if they cannot confirm this, this period of time will be disregarded uh, for the purposes of uh, permanent right of uh, reside application. Uh, let me give you three examples to ensure that you understand it. Uh, the first example is uh, for EU8 nationals, for nationals of these countries. Uh, these countries joined the EU on 1st of May 2004 and the accession period lasted until 30th of April 2011. Uh, nationals from these countries uh, who wanted to work in the UK uh, were required to register under the worker registration scheme uh, uh, during the accession period uh, within a month of joining their new uh, employer. 
if workers fail to register under the scheme, then their employment uh, uh, would be recognized as unlawful, and therefore the spirit of work uh, would uh, uh, would not be counted towards acquisition of uh, permanent uh, residence. Uh, there were exemptions from the worker registration requirement. Uh, workers that they were exempt from the registering on the scheme included uh, those who were self-employed, uh, those who were students, um, uh, those who were legally uh, in the UK on 30th of April 2004 and uh, continued uh, their employment and uh, those who were in continuous employment uh, for a period of at least 12 months falling partly or wholly on or after 30th of April 2004 and those who had lived to enter on the uh, source scheme before 1st of May 2004 and had started working in the UK under the scheme on or after 1st of May 2004 and those who were providing services in the UK on behalf of an employer who uh, is not established in the UK. Uh, let me give you example number two uh, for EU2 nationals. And the 2007 enlargement of uh, the European Union saw Bulgaria and Romania uh, join the EU on 1st of January 2007. The accession period uh, for these two countries lasted until 31st of December 2013. In practice, this meant that most Bulgarians and uh, Romanian nationals uh, coming to work uh, in the UK were required to obtain uh, an accession worker card. Uh, there were several uh, of, of these cards, purple card, the accession workers card, and then the seasonal agricultural uh, worker scheme source card, uh, and then yellow registration certificates, uh, these were issued uh, to students, uh, blue exam registration certificates uh, was uh, given to those who had their visa granted before 1st of January 2007, giving them permission to work. And uh, was, as with all uh, rules, th there were some uh, exceptions, of course. Um, these exceptions included uh, highly skilled migrants and uh, those who held uh, valid leave which restricted their employment to specific types. For example, um, existing uh, work permit holders uh, or uh, pairs, etc. Uh, and also after uh, Bulgarian and Romanian nationals uh, have been given permission to work and have worked under the permission uh, on a continuous basis for 12 months, uh, they would obtain full movement rights as workers under the EU law. Uh, they would be exempt from the requirement to obtain a work authorization uh, document. And the last example is for Croatians. Uh, Croatia joined uh, the EU on 1st of July 2013 and the accession period is still in force uh, for nationals of this country. In practice, this means that they all need to apply uh, for a registration certificate to confirm their right uh, to remain in the UK beyond the initial three months uh, period of time. And uh, there are three types of uh, registration certificates um, for the nationals of this country. Uh, the blue one, uh, you should get a blue registration certificate if you want to work um, uh, for a UK-based employer and you have a degree, a teaching qualification or a higher national diploma uh, from uh, the UK institu educational institution. You should also get a blue registration certificate if you have a Tier 1 exceptional ta uh, talent endorsement uh, from uh, an approved organization purple uh, registration certificate. You should get uh, this purple certificate if you want to work for an employee in the UK and cannot uh, get the blue certificate. You need to be sponsored uh, by an employer first um, uh, and they will give you a certificate of sponsorship a number which you need to provide uh, when you apply. In order for your employer to be able to sponsor you, they should also be registered uh, with the Home Office first. You don't need to apply for a purple 
certificate if number one you were working legally in the uk without restrictions on 30th uh, of june 2013 number two you had uh, a uk visa or work permit before 1st of july 2013 which is still valid and um, you have been uh, working in the uk for a continuous period of time uh, of at least 12 months ending on or after 30th of uh, june 2013 number three uh, work uh, uh, for an uh, EU company uh, which does not usually operate in the UK. Number four, you are a permanent UK resident and uh, or you have a dual nationality including another EA country. Number five, you are a partner of a British citizen. Number six, you are the partner, child or dependent relative of an EU national um, um, other than a creation national. Um, and uh, or that person is settled in the UK. Number seven, you are a member uh, of a diplomatic mission in the UK. Uh, number eight, you hold a blue registration certificate. And number nine, uh, you are self-employed or self-sufficient person. Yellow certificates or creation and national students who want to work in the UK are required to apply for yellow registration certificates. Okay, now that we are all clear about the registration requirements for EU8, EU2 and EU1 countries, let us discuss the section um, uh, of part uh, 9b of the form. Uh, at section 9.14, they ask you to give details of any worker registration uh, certificates, work authorization uh, or any other documents giving you permission to work in the UK. Uh, for those of you who uh, did not have a valid uh, document giving you permission to work um, at uh, section 9.6.16, uh, they are trying to establish if you were exempt from uh, applying and uh, if you were, you should tick uh, the box here. If you were not exempt but did not apply, you should tick the box here. If you were exempt uh, from registration at section 9.17, they ask you to explain why this was so. And at section 9.18, they ask you to provide them with details of any unauthorized employment. Uh, due to Brexit situation and the uncertainty uh, surrounding rights of EU nationals and their family members in the UK, uh, permanent residence application forms uh, topic became particularly relevant. Uh, I've noticed that some of you are completely lost in this 85-page form full of uh, legal terms uh, spread across the 19 sections. And therefore, I've created a free expert secrets guide on how to complete uh, this permanent residence EAPR form. And you can now claim your uh, own free copy at bit.ly forward slash free guide on EAPR form. Uh, this offer is very limited though, so don't be left behind and claim uh, your copy today. Uh, please give thumbs up, uh, subscribe and share this information with those who may benefit from it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.